Moving low to the ground is foreign in most modern countries. We're used to walking upright and sitting in chairs. But take a look at wrestlers and martial artists who constantly traverse close to the ground, and we see a unique source of strength, mobility, and agileness. It's becoming common knowledge that full depth squats are great for maintaining healthy, strong legs. But moving from that crouched position has the potential to nourish your lower body even more if done gradually. Learning to move from a squat is step number one. Start by using your hands to guide you and shift weight from side to side to move forward and back. Duck walk is the next step. Now we can start to push the front knee forward and let that back hip open. In the beginning, this can be hard on the feet, the knees, and the hips, but over time, it'll result in them becoming more resilient. And there's a unique strength in being able to go from sitting to standing with no hands. Try lunging your knee to the ground, folding the leg into a seated position. You can alternate from side to side and try to make it as smooth as possible. Now these movements won't result in big shredded legs, but they'll help you move better. Kettlebells are one of the most versatile tools for the minimalist training in their backyard. One decent sized kettlebell could allow you to get a full body workout in. They can make you really strong and they don't require a high level of skill so beginners and advanced trainees can get a great workout. The goblet squat is a phenomenal exercise to teach you how to squat better. Holding the kettlebell in front gives you a counterbalance which will allow you to sit deeper and sit more fluidly into your squat. And at the bottom, you can drive your elbows into your knees, now allowing for more mobility. Most people underestimate how many gains you can make just from doing goblet squats at the right intensity. Higher reps and more frequency works the best. Elevate the heels for a bigger quad pump. One of the most exciting things to do with a kettlebell is to swing it. Swings change our more traditional strength efforts into a more dynamic and powerful work, triggering fast twitch muscle fibers and giving you a conditioning effect. Swings are a great way to put more intensity into your hips without adding a ton of weight. And the swing is a full body movement because it forces you to stabilize through the shoulder and the core. Make sure you're using a hinging pattern rather than a squatting pattern in your swing. The knees stay straight-ish, like a Romanian deadlift, as the bell goes through your legs and your chest moves towards the ground, keeping your back nice and straight. You then extend at the hips, squeezing your glutes, bringing your torso upright and that kettlebell to about chest height. The arms are just connectors. Think of them as ropes with hooks at the end. The hips do all the work. You won't look like a bodybuilder, but you may run faster. Any minimalist athlete will put some time into bodyweight leg strength training. Unlike kettlebells, more advanced bodyweight leg movements take skill and range of motion. These are a good way to build your mobility in a very practical way. Pistol squats, shrimp squats, and Nordic curls take strength in deep, disadvantaged positions. And you gain a unique type of strength and body control because there's a lot of coordination involved as well. These can be great for the individual who enjoys a challenge in unlocking something new for themselves. But keeping it basic with body weight leg training can also have great effects as well. If you're not interested in having massive legs or pushing your mobility, but want strength for hobbies like hiking, running, or cycling, high rep, body weight squats will bring tons of benefits. I like to use a combination of heels down and heels up. Along with a combination of high rep lunges, these can bring tons of blood flow to your joints and develop your strength endurance. There's a whole world of body weight leg training that you may not be aware of. Check out our video on a full body weight legs guide, link in description. Your muscles don't know the difference between 200 pounds and 100 pounds. They just know how to contract harder or less hard. One way to overcome this without adding tons of weight is to put your muscles in harder positions for them to contract. We call this full range of motion training. Take the stiff-legged deadlift or Romanian deadlift as an example. We take the hamstrings and glutes to deep ranges of motion and now they have to work harder to execute the same movement with less weight. And the added benefit here is you'll get tons of flexibility for free. Ben Patrick's ATG split squat is great because you're training the front leg, glute, hamstring, and quad while also training the back leg, hip flexors, and quads. You're training strength but also training your ability to split the legs apart and as a result you'll open up your stiff legs. Similarly, the
back squat trains your ability to split your legs in the side-to-side -side range of motion. Commonly underused by most, this will create strength in the inner thighs as well as flexibility. I was able to achieve this range of motion just by training Cossack squats. The reverse Nordic curl is a prime example of putting your body in a disadvantaged position, or in simple terms, make an exercise crazy hard. In a squat, your quads are at a prime position to contract and produce force. In the reverse Nordic, your quads are at maximum length. This will feel pretty foreign to most people, but it can have profound effects for your strength and flexibility. Power and explosiveness are some of the best attributes that we can have in our body. But being fast can get written off as for athletes only. But the average person needs a certain level of power to maintain youthfulness. Sprinting is a full body workout that trains fast twitch muscle fibers. This can result in more muscle mass and have positive effects on hormones like testosterone and growth hormone, while also having some powerful fat loss effects. So obviously it's a very high bang for your buck exercise, and the cool thing is it doesn't require that much volume. A few full out sprints can be enough to get you a nice training stimulus. Jumping also trains fast twitch muscle fibers and has similar benefits to sprinting, and a lot of forms of jumping have the benefit of being able to track your progress. Jumping on a platform, vary the height to challenge yourself more. Broad jumps allow you to train your max jump without too much impact because you don't move very high. This can be done anywhere, but a soft landing like grass can be nice on your joints. Jumping to reach an object allows you to fully engage your arms to jump as high as you can upward. Adding two jumps together can allow you to train your speed, and a simple jump rope or small hops can train your feet and ankles to be strong and springy. Just like sprinting, you don't have to do a ton of this. Small but high intensities can bring a host of benefits. Power fades quickly as we age, so it's sensible to train it as long as we can. Balance is often overlooked because, let's face it, it's not quite as sexy as other leg training. But balance and stability are probably the key to a body that feels good. If you have nagging injuries or lingering tightness in joints, then balance and stability training can have profound effects. We love to do this as kids because it's natural and quite fun. The best place to start is with basic one leg balancing. Try closing your eyes for an extra challenge. Moving from a one leg balance position challenges your balance and stability even more. Use the single leg deadlift and challenge yourself with other positions as well. And you can add in kettlebells for more strength demands. Once you've mastered this, we love implementing the rail balance. Start with parallettes to lower the risk of falling. Find your balance first with your body parallel to the rail. This can be with both one leg or two legs. Shifting your body to perpendicular to the rail creates an extra challenge. Taking it to a handrail outside is fun and it gets you traversing in your environment. This is a classic parkour warm-up to develop precision. Also, balancing on a rail gets your whole body involved. Your nervous system is fired up and your focus is turned on. It's often said that life is about balance. It makes sense to train it. As a society, we've come to think of leg day as strength and muscle. But if you think about all the different things we can do with our lower body, we see that there's many different qualities that we can develop. And you don't have to choose just one. The modern day complete athlete can train strength, power, flexibility, and agileness. And as we see in this video, you can do it with a lot less than you think. So what type of leg training are you currently working on? Comment below, let us know. If you're interested in developing body weight strength, mobility, and animal movements all combined into one, check out our 90-day program, Move Strong Now. Appreciate you guys, as always.